Anna Melissa is the newest feature film from writer-director Charlie Kaufman, who originally had this as a sound play, and where people would come to the theater, they would hear it, but there was absolutely nothing on stage. And he originally just liked it like that. He didn't want the story to be told in any other medium, but that until he realized, well, you know, I'm getting pitched this idea, movies are hard to make. I'ma hop on that bad boy. He then collaborated with Duke Johnson, who is the co-director who has worked with Stop Animation before. They got Dan Harmon to produce who you may know from Community or Rick and Morty. They were able to kickstart this bad boy, and now we can talk about the good, the bad, and everything in between about Anna Melissa. And if you've ever seen a Kaufman film before or any of his projects, you would know that they are uh, very heavy, they're complex, and they're sometimes hard to follow and I was expecting this to be the same thing and then ended up being the easiest to follow which was awkward because I told my girlfriend okay this is going to be very complicated you're not going to understand it. you can't pass judgment until the third time and then she came out thinking she was a genius which may be a good thing for those who don't like the complexity of his other movies and want it to be easier to follow or a bad thing if you were expecting another Synecdoche New York. Either way though I still think that it works. The story without giving too much away is that of a customer service specialist who has just gotten into this rut and he can't connect to anyone around him, building on these themes of repetitiveness and life becoming very dull and boring. And it's something that Kaufman is a genius at dissecting. And this movie does a phenomenal job with it, especially as it builds up into this interaction that the characters come into. And I think that the best way to have told a story besides the original format of it just being a sound play is that of stop motion, because the designs, the specific designs on these characters are phenomenal. The time and effort that is put into this warrants an Oscar nomination for best production design because it's just the detail, the time that goes into just making a simple minute of stop motion animation is incredible. More so the reason why it works phenomenally for this movie is because it is a meta blend of emotions. While you are watching this knowing that it is a mature stop motion animation, it's awkward, it's, it's funny, yet you can see how it's dramatic, and that's just your judgments on the fact that it's stop motion. Then you realize that those emotions that you're feeling for the medium that it's being told conveys even more what the characters are feeling on screen of this awkward moment that is also comedic yet dramatic. Thus, it amplifies the emotions for the audience and it's pure genius. It's also funny from what I learned in the Q&A that Johnson actually based one of the character models who is a jerk off of his sister's ex-husband who is a jerk as well. The voice acting, while limited, is also very great, with Remus Lupin from Harry Potter, who many of you may know, being the main guy, who has a very heavy accent, which plays a big part in the movie. Jennifer Jason Lee as Lisa, and Tom Noonan, who I would say was the best part of the movie. In order to tell the story, the movie does become very repetitive at times, and I know that can become also very dull, ironically, but it's also, as I said, the most accessible Kaufman film, but that still doesn't mean that it's going to appeal to everybody. For me, however, I would say that it's one of the best animations of the year up there with Inside Out, and not saying that Inside Out was the greatest, but it is this contrast between the two, Inside Out being your regular animation that appeals to everybody, Anamalisa being strictly an adult animation, and we're sure, we've had those satirical, you know, animations for adults that are funny, we've had things like Mary and Max, but this is the most human, the most adult-oriented animation that I've ever seen. And I mean that it's just for adults when you see some of the scenes in this movie. By the end credits, I would say that Anamalisa is worth the combo price at theaters, especially if you're a Kaufman fan or you've been craving more mature animations. Not saying that it's Kaufman's best or my favorite movie of the year, but still is one of the best of the year and one that'll have you craving chili from Cincinnati. However, as always, I'm curious your thoughts. If you were able to check out Anamalisa, definitely let me know down below in the comments section where you think it falls in the filmography of Kaufman, if you think it is one of the best mature animations, or if you think that there are other ones that don't get enough attention. We can discuss all that down below in the comment section, and don't forget to stop, motion down below, and comment, like, and subscribe. Continue to watch movies, and until next time, I'll be seeing you guys later.